Hello everyone, I am Roberto, undergraduate computer science student from Federal University of Campina Grande and I'm glad to be here with you today to talk about the tracking of sensitive data and confidential executions. Now let's start. Data is one of the most important assets we have in the digital world. This is a fact. For example, the data we all produce is highly valuable for advertisement, healthcare, BI, recommender systems, and so on. This inherent value of data can be transformed in a differential for many companies, since it allows the discovery of valuable knowledge. However, several issues related to data security comes up when sensitive data is explored in these goals. The Facebook Cambridge Analytica scandal was one of the most famous and impactful data leakages, which revealed us some of the issues about data privacy and about how our data is used. About the scandal, the Cambridge Analytica would have gained access to the data of 87 million of Facebook users and used this data to create a system that can predict and influence the choice of the voters at the polls. The forces of market impose a natural punishment to these companies. The Cambridge Analytica declared bankruptcy and 100 billion was knocked off from Facebook's valuation. The GDPR comes to regulate many aspects related to data privacy and security. The regulation defines that data can be erased anytime, spotlighted the features for a system that handles sensitive data, and clears out that data subjects may have access to which purposes their data is used and by who is used. In other words, the access right to personal data means tracking which application is processing data, and from another perspective, personal data is not the only type of sensitive data. Applications considered strategic for some companies can be regarded as sensitive and in some situations needs to be protected. Healthcare, marketing, biometrics, BI or any application which handles sensitive data must be highly auditable. If we can ensure in a verifiable way which application is processing the data, the applications which handle sensitive data becomes much more feasible and trustable. With this context in mind, we present the NAT a reliable platform for traceable executions of applications over data. The main difference of the NAT approach to standard data policies is that the actions performed on the NAT can be audited in a transparent and temper-proof way. This feature is an outcome of the combined utilization of the blockchain with trusted execution environments. The heart of how the NAT works is in the union of traceability and immutability properties provided by blockchain and the attestation of code provided by TEs. To understand better how it works, let's dive into the NAT. The platform has five components, client, object storage, executor, blockchain and KMS. Now, we are going to explain the workflow of asset registration in the NAT. In this operation appears our first actor, the asset owner. This actor can be someone who has a data or an application and it's interested in providing your asset to third use. It is worth mentioning that because the sensitiveness of the data or of the application, the asset owner can assign a compensation value to an asset. Okay, the asset owner registers a data or an app 
in the platform through the client component, which is the entry point for all the operations on the NAT. When the asset owner registers an asset, three important things occur. First, the asset is sent encrypted to an object storage. After, the key used to encrypt the asset is associated with an environment measurement and this is sent to KMS, so the key retrieval in the near future will occur only if environments complies with the right measurement. This is part of the Intel SGX attestation process. Finally, the third step is that the asset metadata is sent to blockchain with the aid of smart contracts and the asset now is available for usage. Our second operation in the NAT is the execution request. The execution requester will ask the blockchain to execute an application A1 over some data D1. And here the traceability property of blockchain comes in because every request for execution is logged on on the blockchain and the accountability becomes possible in the future. Our third operation is the application execution. An execution requester carries the executor component with a signed message in order to have its request authorized. Once the execution is authorized, the executor asks KMS for attestation and if the measurement of executor environment complies with the measurement provided previously by asset owner, the trusted part of executor can start. The executor is one of the most important component of the architecture because he has some core responsibilities. First, it verifies by carrying the blockchain if the application code is the right one and if the data loaded inside the secure environment was not tampered with. With the verification that the user is authorized and the application and data was not modified, the execution can proceed. Finally, all the assets registered in the DNAT can be listed, its usage can be tracked and its access can be revoked anytime. Our evaluation was focused in understanding the variables behind the DNAT operations. We divided the evaluation in two categories, on-chain assessment and off-chain assessment. When some operation changes the state of smart contract, this means that they have an on-chain component. And when an operation needs to perform any computation out of the smart contract, this means that they have an off-chain component. When we think about the on-chain computations, we think about the financial viability of the operations and the urgency for operation consolidation. For example, in the table 1, we have the cost in dollars of the DNAT on-chain operations. The table also demonstrates the prices for a low and a fast operation consolidation. So, if an asset owner needs to urgently consolidate the asset registration, and here urgently is less than 2 minutes, she would have paid 61 cents of a dollar. But if the user doesn't have the urgency, she would have paid 6 cents of dollar to have the operation consolidated in until 30 minutes. This, the costs can be balanced with the fact that the NHE has the capability 
of asset compensation. So, regarding the amount spent on registration, the asset owner can recover the value if someone uses its dataset. Today, this cost has changed considerably, but using other networks such as Ethereum Classic would make it affordable again. Now, we are going to talk about our first of chain evaluation. The figure 1 shows the latency for the register operation. Here, we experiment two different workloads in order to identify which are the variables that affect the latency of asset registration. As expected, the execution time increases as the workload size increases and the core data operations like reading, encrypting, hashing and storing typically consumes more time as the file size increases. The tracking execution time is mostly defined by the search in blocks of blockchain. As we perceive in the future, the latency of block querying will increase linearly with the number of blocks, so the latency of tracking in the NAT is proportional to the searching blocks. One of the most important operations in the NAT is the application execution. To evaluate its performance, we use it some machine learning algorithms to train models over sensitive data. One of our first results is that the overhead imposed by the application execution on the NAT was not marginal. The ratio between execution time inside and outside the DNAT showed us that the execution time was increased by a factor between 49.9 and 102.9. So, the question is, which variables are responsible for this increasing rate? We can observe that for applications running in small workloads, the overhead added by the basic operations of executor component is not marginal. Okay, but one thing we have to consider is that the training that, that training a model over some data is not a task frequently performed. This kind of tasks can be performed monthly or even at a longer time intervals. And this scenario demonstrates the DNAT as practicable. Finally, when workload size increases, the basic operations of the executor becomes less impacting and the application computation in Intel SGX becomes the main reason of execution latency. So the overhead introduced by the DNAT platform is very small for larger workloads. The main goal of DNAT is application and data traceability. The related work demonstrates interesting applications of the technologies used in the NAT and validates that characteristics behind these technologies contain a lot of potential to solve challenging problems. The usage of blockchain to provide traceability or the use of trusted execution environments to outsource trustworthy computation are examples of intersections between the NAT and the related work, but the related work there is no focus on the tracking of sensitive data and confidential executions as done in this work. To summarize, our work presents the NAT, a platform for tracking confidential executions of applications over sensitive data. The experiments showed us that when considering confidential executions, there's a time cost linked to the overhead caused by the TE approach. And this overhead can be considered proportional to the workload size. Finally, 
Future steps of this work will include the optimization of performance of confidential execution and of optimization of on-chain costs. Thank you.